But I can't really stave off the temptation to say a few words about what we have achieved here. In 1994, a group of soldiers hijacked our democracy and suspended our constitution and made us believe that they were soldiers with a difference, that they are going to salvage this country and save it from rampant corruption, nepotism, and bring in transparency, accountability, and probity. And we embrace them, at least many of us, me including. And if we are all honest, most of us, the majority, embraced it. Because also, we were tired of the slow pace of development. We had a great democracy. We had one of the best civil services in the world. We had an unblemished human rights record, once to boast about everywhere. But we kicked it aside and embraced a military junta. And they made us believe they were soldiers with a difference. And that is, in fact, or was, in fact, the commencement of our inquiry. Soon we realized that they were humiliating our political leaders. They were humiliating the elite, putting them on military trucks and dumping them in military barracks. They attacked people on the roads to sow power. People were shot at by these convoys. We have received evidence from the actual perpetrators. Sanasabali himself came here and told the commission all those shenanigans they were doing. They were imposing their will on the Gambian people in the most distardly manner. Uh, Mr. Chair, we saw them attack the security personnel and dumped most of the senior security officers in jail unlawfully, unlawfully. And we have seen how on the night of September 6th, they Nicodemusly went to the jail and unlawfully tortured and brutalized the senior military officers. It, it was done cowardly. We have had Edward Singate testify about it. We have had Ibrahim, Ibrahim Chongan testify about it, and a host of older soldiers testify about this. I wasn't prepared, Mr. Chair, to deliver closing arguments, but we would give you a gist, a flavor of what we were dealing with, as if that was not enough in the night of September. They started arresting our political leaders again and torturing them at mile two prisons. We've had, Ed, we've had Edward Singate talk about how he managed to stop it. We have had Sanasabali talk about how he did it, how OJ and others became victims. But this was just these little symptoms that were emerging. Lawyer Usman Silla wrote to Jame and told him how he was seeing the seeds of the status being showed and how Jame was planning to self-perpetuate himself in power and that he must stop. He was one of the few brave men who dared the bejoining dictatorship and protested directly to those concerned. But these guys, they had a different agenda. As they were pushing constitutional reform with a view to bringing in a new constitution, it was quite obvious, at least to lawyer Usman Silla, 
that these people had no intention of relinquishing power. Even if we were to return to democracy, it would be democracy as per members of the junta. Democracy as per Yaya Jame. And the facts would soon unfold, Mr. Chair. As the junta started doing, taking the necessary steps to silence all sections of Gambian society so that Jame can self perpetuate himself in power. And we have seen the steps he's taken. The first was to silence the soldiers. We have heard what happened in November 11, where they took 11 officers and men of the Gambian National Army and executed them in cold blood, in utter blatant violation of the law. These men were unarmed. They were stripped, almost naked, humiliated. They were tortured and executed. And we have heard how the leaders sat before the commission and deride the international conventions that apply to all civil men of civilized, people of civilized behavior, the Geneva Conventions and the additional protocols. Much to your chagrin, Mr. Chair, because I could recall you telling Sana Sabali, I spent years teaching generals about these rules. You sit here and tell us that these are not important. They disregarded completely the applicability or the application of these laws and did what they wanted. I recall Edward Singate saying, Jame told us to take no prisoners. And he interpreted that as an order to kill all the ringleaders. And that is what they did. On Remembrance Day, or day before Remembrance Day, they executed their colleagues in cold blood. They wanted to silence those who could potentially challenge their authority. But they did not stop there. The next step, the next step was to see who were the dissenters. Quickly, Sanasabali realized that they are off onto the wrong track. Soon, Yaya Jame had different ideas. Sana had to go because Sana had the audacity to say, no, we got to go, to the, go back to the barracks. We've heard Edward Singate about how they hatched a plan and eliminated him and falsely accused him of something he never did and has no clue about, dumped him in prison, tortured him, and secured a conviction of him for nine years. He even testified before the commission that he served his term. They wouldn't even let him out. Well, we have seen his name on the wish list. How did you call it? The spiritual hit list of Yahya Jabe. He was that much of a nuisance to him. He too deserved to die, at least spiritually. And then Korosise came. And then come Korosise, a young man with the brightest future ahead of him, super brilliant, of high intellect, wonderful training, because he objected to their nefarious plans they had to silence him. But knowing Koro, sacking him from the job would not have silenced him, they decided to silence him permanently. Those were the words of Mustafa Marong, former Minister of Justice who appeared before this commission. And that was the beginning of the crisis we were going to face. Because at that stage, Gambians started a question. Gambian started accepting. The complaints reduced. 
and Jame won elections. Whew. The beginning of much more trouble to come. In order to further solidify his power, he started attacking the media. We have heard how over 140 personnel of the media fraternity were arrested, detained, and some tortured. We have heard how media houses were attacked and burnt, including that of our chief executive, Baba Gale Jalo, who on several occasions was whisked to the NIA, threatened and intimidated, like many of his colleagues who had to end up in exile because Jame had to muscle the media. They had to keep quiet so that he could self-perpetuate himself in power. But he did not limit himself just to that. He, he attacked the students because they dared to complain. We remember on April 10 and 11, how 14, at least 12 of our young people, students, were brutally butchered along Kairaba Avenue and near Red Cross and so forth, by forces under the command of Jame. And we have heard how the instructions came from Cuba to Aisha Tunjai Sedi, who appeared before this commission to say, well, he ordered the military to go and take care of the situation. We have heard from Green Jai, who explained how they had instructions and he had to shoot at students. Uh, Mr. Chair, the attacks on the Gambian people were not only limited to that. Through a beauty pageant, and through a protocol girl system, our sisters were humiliated, sexually abused, just to further subjugate the government people. And so ego and so superiority for one's self-aggrandizement. We have seen, Mr. Chair, how institutions were created that are aimed at further strengthening or creating a dictatorship. The NIA, with all those monstrous powers they were given, and a very compliant justice system, anchored and chaperoned by so-called Nigerian mercenary judges. And we have seen how investigative processes and judicial processes were compromised in order to produce desired results for Jami. Uh, and, and Mr. Chair, not only the institutions for investigating and prosecuting and judging, but even the institution to keep these people, the prison became his five-star hotel, lacking of any facility that would help a person have a good life. The mere fact of being in mile two is a violation of a person's rights because it is completely at odds with the UN standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners. And Mr. Chair, if one were to end up in mile two, you leave being half the person or less of the person you were when you went in. And Jamie knew that. That's why he called it the Five Star Hotel. And we have seen how Jamie had dealt with those people who dared challenge his authority, or those he perceived to be challenging his authority. And we have heard of all those so-called coups that happened and how he dealt with them. We've heard about the Ndur Cham one in 2006, March, wherein 
those who were involved and those who were not involved were corralled and taken to uh, mile two prisons, brutalized, taken to the NIA, tortured and forced to give confessions which were used against them in court and convicted. We have heard how Lang Tombong's evidence was manufactured. In fact, today our witness talked about how they sat there and manufactured evidence to Jamez knowledge, which led to sentencing Lang Tombong to, to death. And that is the ultimate. It could have been executed. If that had happened, we would have lost a patriotic son, unlawfully. And this has happened several times. Mr. Chair, even political dissent was so suppressed that Jame could easily sail through elections. He manipulated the laws to ensure that he remained in power. That's why he had the audacity to tell us, I will be in power for a, million year, for a billion years, because he had all the confidence. He's taken all the steps. He has instituted a dictatorship. And when Sanding and others decided to protest, He treated them in the only language he understood, violence, leading to the death of Solo Sandeng and the brutal torture of his cohorts. This was the Gambia that we had. So important was his thrown to him that he would not even spare his relatives. We had today from a person who was very close to him that he killed at least five of them just because he believed those people wanted him dead. And in the process, Mr. Chair, I have just sat down here and draw up a list of those who were killed attributed to Jame and his forces. And Mr. Chair, my count or our count, came to 214 people. 214 people in a small country like Gambia that borders or smacks of crimes against humanity. For a country as small as Gambia that smacks of crimes against humanity. And I can give you a list. November 11, 11 people, 11 soldiers summarily executed. April 10th, 14, well, 12 school children and two people executed. His relatives, five of them, Harona, Jasaja, Sise Bujiling, uh, Mumadulamin, Nyasi, Masi Jame, and others. Five of them. Daba Marena and Co. We have heard from the person closest to Jame just yesterday as to how Jame sat there and planned how to lie to the Gambian people what happened to these people. How Tumbul Tamba called and said, tell, tell him fucking mission accomplished and how he was given a big bag of money. Daba Marena and co. lost their lives unnecessarily. They did nothing. We've heard how the West African migrants were butchered in several places around the country, 67 of them. Initially, we thought they were 34, then 44, then 57, and ultimately, 67 people butchered. And the government went on a campaign to cover this up. Well, we have had even today the witch hunting exercise that was ordered by Jame. 41 people died. A lot of them, our grandmothers and our grandfathers, humiliated, tortured, some sexually abused. We've heard about the fraudulent P 
PATP, that is the President Alternative Treatment Program. We've had that. Well, only one person claimed to have been cured, and that person did not come to the commission. It's being rumored out there. But everybody else, everybody else who, who was in that program and testified before this commission said that they are still HIV positive, and that soon after the treatment, they had to go into conventional medicine. Without that, they would have died. They were hoodwinked into believing that our president had a cure. And Mr. Chair, let nobody kid you. If the president of your country tells you he can do something, the tendency is you would believe him. He fraudulently lured our sick people into a treatment program that was bogus. He was a charlatan. He was a quack. Can't be described in any lesser way, Mr. Chair. And Saketa testified here and talked about how he was captured and taken to Kanilai and being tortured. And eight people he provided that list were killed while he was there. Eight people, and he, including that woman who was supposed to have a beard, and they butchered her for bamboo sada to be given to the crocodiles as charity. Charity for who? For the benefit of Jabbe. Why? For him to entrench himself on the throne. If you add that all together, it gives you about 204. Well, yes, about 204. And then we, ha I have, we have written down another list of those who are not counted. Kurosise, Usman Kurosise, Deida Haidara. Baba Job, Dongombub, Soldau, Mahawacham, Nurcham, Tumane Jalo, Abdullah Gay, Alma Mumumane, Alma Mumane, Ahmadu Dumbuya, Dauda Nyasi, Mustafa Kuli, Ilo Jalo, Mariama Kamara and her husband, Alfa Jalo, this we've not been able to investigate conclusively. Yet, but we are still at it. Mahmoud Sise and Ibu Job. We had Oya. He testified before here. He said, Yaya Jahme instructed them to chop them up. It was insufficient to just kill them. It was insufficient to decapitate them. They had to chop them up. Gruesome. 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 And Tumbul Tamba. And I will come back to him. The Nigerian killed by Alma Momane after the Jamo, Jame convoy. Well, we've had Ali, uh, sorry, Jalo today's and yesterday, saying Jame protected him. This, is, this was a country where if you kill in the name of the head of state, you get protected or even get promoted. This was the Gambia we lived in. Yaya Drame was captured. The rebel attack in Farafenye. He was tortured so badly, few months later, he died. Jame created these institutions wherein torture was the name of the game. Torture was the order of the day. It was his star chamber. We've heard the NIA officer saying 
that torture was almost certain to happen in cases where he is involved. In fact, we've heard from someone so close to Jame who told us sometimes he will come disguised and participate in torture. Well, the public may not have, have heard that. Yes, but it is evidence before the commission. We have heard how video recorders are carried by some of his agents, and they will take videos of tortures well, and maybe even killings, because we have heard how Dabamarena and co. were dealt with. Tumbul had to come with a video recorder and a video camera and had to show Jame proof. I am ashamed that this was the country our people lived in. I am ashamed that this is the country that my parents lived in. I am ashamed that this is the country my children live in, and this is where they're growing up. This is what happened in Gambia. Between 220 murders to 250 murders occurred in this country during Jame's rule, attributable to Jame. And that is not the end force disappeared. We've heard from Sheikh Ujala. Jame told him, oh, Solo is lucky, but for my mother, I would have disappeared him. Well, disappearing people was part of his modus operandi. Indeed, Buba Yabo disappeared. Abdullahi An disappeared. Baba Isanyang disappeared. Chief Ibrahim Amane disappeared. Omar Haidara disappeared. Sidi Sane disappeared, Momodu Job disappeared, and Kanye Bakanyi, we've heard from his wife how the NIA took him away from their home. We've heard from people who were at NIA, at Mile Two Prisons, describing how he was taken away at night. So bad it was that when civil servants went to work, they're not sure they're going to come back home. And to tame the civil service, he had the laws to do it. You dance to his tune, you're safe. You don't, you, ha you face the peril of a false information charge or an economic crimes charge or being sacked by a letter of one or two lines or at least one sentence without recourse to law. That is the evidence that's been unearthed before this commission. There may be deniers. Yes, there will be deniers. But these numbers don't lie. These numbers don't lie. If you ask the family of Solo Sandeng, they would tell you we feel the pain. Deny as much as you wish, but we feel the pain. If you ask Ahmadou Kebe, he would say deny as much as you want. I am walking with one foot shorter. Ask those students who were there on that fateful day of April 10th. Some would tell you I have a bullet lodged in my body. Those things don't lie. Deny as much as you wish. But the facts speak for themselves. And the Gambian people have seen it. What we had was a terrible dictatorship that would do everything to self-perpetuate and to, and to strengthen its so-called supremacy over the Gambian people. No wonder it demanded to be crowned. And we had millions running around the country trying to secure that. We have had Yaya Jajusi saying that the meetings were held at his home. If the Gambian people were in strong at that point, we would have been having a monarchy now. The kingdom of, I don't want to say it, with James Junkung the first as our king. That is what was going to happen. 
and thanks to God, the Gambian people dug deep into their reservoir and said, no, 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 it's not going to happen. But by this time, we had gone too far into a dictatorship. We have gone too far into self-perpetuation with 22 years. We have gone too far deep in corruption where the, book, the whole treasury and the central bank was an extension of the executive household. We have heard from Mr. Njai, who testified a few days ago, how his property was taken away from him in gangster style. Mr. Chair, all these things I am saying tells me crimes against humanity, crimes against humanity, crimes against humanity. And the forum to deal with that is not only limited in Gambia. It could be Gambia, it could be Ghana, it could be West Africa, it could be somewhere in Africa, it could be the ICC. So no matter how people deny, no matter how one can control what may happen in Gambia, that same institution cannot control what happens outside or elsewhere. We have seen Hussein Habri, he's run away for 20 something years, he had to face the law. The other day I saw a publication with the justice dial pointing at Jame. Perhaps that is what needs to happen. Justice must happen. We all crave for reconciliation. And that is fundamental. That is absolutely important. We all crave for unity of the Gambian people because we are in one little boat. And all of us have to be our brother's keeper so that we can keep this little boat afloat. But that said, there must also be justice. There should be justice for the victims. There should be justice for us as a people because we are all scared, we are all traumatized as a people because of the dark chapter that happened to us. 22 years of brutality, 22 years of disrespect for the Gambian people. But we are the cause of it because we succumbed. We accepted it. We coached him through it. We guided him through it. We told him we would accept it. And no wonder when he threw water, even some of our imams would dive just to touch that water. Because coming from him, it has spiritual value. Embarrassing situation. This is what I see Dr. Sise asking whether that is true. Yes, indeed, it happened in this country. Dictatorship, self-perpetuation in power, and corruption is a recipe for disaster. But in order to free ourselves from those circles, we have to ensure that there is rule of law in this country and that we have strong instit democratic institutions. Otherwise, we are doomed. And this has to be the cornerstone of the recommendations of the TRRC. If never again is to be meaningful, it has to be anchored on rule of law. It has to be anchored on strong institutions. It has to be anchored on a disciplined society. I pray to God that we reform our attitudes and we show commitment to this little country called Gambia. That we have so much, as said by Mr. Ka, borrowed from our children. We have to be careful the Gambia we hand over to them. If we do not correct the ills of the past, we will be sowing seeds of disaster for the future. I leave it at that, Mr. Chair. I think we have made a good case. Even those who are in denial, if they search deep down, they would see that the truth has come out. 
And the truth is, Jame took us on a wild ride for his own self-aggrandizement. He has to pay the price. And those who enabled him, 